Hello guys, Master Gaming here. Uh, last time <coughs> we played Mass Effect 3, the playthrough of the City Dale. Um, we just finished talking to Joker and he wanted to know about bait, but the overall mission is, uh, you know, we basically got to talk to everybody. So uh, let's see what everybody gets to say. What's up, Tally? I used to walk around near that sushi place and watch the fish through the window. I knew they'd never let but I think to myself, someday, uh -huh. when I've proven my worth to the galaxy, I'll go there for dinner. And then, you broke their floor. Do they even have food you can eat there? Not the point, Shepard. Okay, Tally's pissed at us because we destroyed the restaurant. All right, let's yeah, see what Ash got to say. If anybody can sift through a mountain of boring stuff to find that one critical clue, it's her. Okay, that's what I asked for the hills. Alright, what's up, Edie? Civilian casualties seem to have been restricted to fish. Huh. Fish, huh? I'll be damned. Nothing beats Alright, what's up, Jack? Huh? Nothing beats out. Not a buddy like that once. But, uh, no, not so much a buddy. Uh, more of a prisoner to help us. More of a prisoner. It's a long story, man. Anyway. Brooke, she's kind of cute. Think she's on the market? Shepard, I've found oh, something. Okay, we can so gather James the team whenever you're ready. I'm going to have to write okay, a report we'll about getting shot. So the truth is a really complicated shot. It's faster if you make a template. <sighs> Maybe you get shot too much. <laughs> uh, I never could find Garrus anywhere. None of us saw that coming. But, lesson learned. Never have dinner with Joker. It won't end well. Uh, well, as I was saying before, I talked to Cortez. I could never ever find Garrus in, in either one of my playthroughs. Uh, but this time, you know, I'm gonna try to search for him. Let's see if we can find him anywhere. Should be somewhere around here. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Here's Rex. Rex is gonna be up here, and there's Javik. Commander, in my cycle, when we fled combat by falling through tanks containing aquatic animals, we usually... Oh, we right. We never did. <laughs> we never did. You are a trailblazer. You are a trailblazer. <laughs> Funny. Alright, I guess Jabber got a couple of jokes. Oh, where the hell is Garrus? Did not find him anywhere. Huh, I'll be down. Huh. That's something. You, know, you usually find everybody else, but you can't find, I can't find gear. Oh, there's Garrus right there in my fucking face. I ain't died about a bitch. Damn. So, what okay, what's up, Garrus? Minutes, started shooting at you. On the other hand, we get this cool secret hideout to hang out in. Unless the bad guys get through the window. <laughs> Yeah, good old Garrus. Okay, we'll see what Liara and Bruce got to talk about. Well, liking, liking this playthrough so far. I got a good amount of hits from the first one, so I'm going to keep this I've thing rolling. Would you like rolling, me to call rolling, rolling, and stuff, but okay, here we go. Do it. All right, let's get it started, Liara. We have a lead. I called in some favors to run a trace on the gun. It led me to a casino owner named Elijah Khan. He's been suspected of using his profits to smuggle weapons onto the Citadel. Immediately after the attempt on Shepard's life, Khan made an interesting call. I'm cutting you off. I'm returning your down payment now. What's the problem? Turn on a vid screen. When I sell a gun, I don't want it showing up on the nightly news. You won't be late to me. Save it. Our association is terminated. And if you even think of coming after me, I've got info on you ready for prime time. So you ponder that. Con out. So that's our identity thief. Looks like he's got an ID disguise on it. Those things are a pain in the ass to get around. Con didn't sound friendly to whoever that voice was. Maybe he'd pass on that info to us. That would take some extremely smooth talking. If he sees you, he'll probably assume you're looking for revenge. The casino has a panic room. 
Chances are he'll have gone to ground there. Edie can give us programs to hack the door, but the cameras and guards complicate things. Yeah. Khan could disappear. Or worse, if his guards ever open fire, normal people could get hit. Like I did. She's right. We can't risk spooking him. We go in quiet. Small team, no gunplay. Dr. Tassoni, this evening the casino will be hosting a charity event to assist war refugees. Purchase some tickets, Glyph. Then call up a layout of the building. Score. So, how close can you get? You don't usually put a back door in a panic room. This air shaft bypasses the security gate and ends up in storage. From there, the panic room's door camera can be disabled. Mm, too convenient. There's gonna be alarms all over that shaft. I believe I have some countermeasures that may help. I'll know more once we're inside. Who will go in this shaft? They need to be small in size. Yeah, that's not me. How many snacks of roast barren leg? I suspect my suit's built-in tech would be picked up by security sensors. My presence in the casino would arouse suspicion. Mechs are not allowed, since they can have cheating software. What you need is somebody trained in zero emissions tech. No electronics, no metal, just undetectable polymers. We had a course back at Op In, disabling a bomb with these little tweezers. See, the bomb was filled with shaving cream. All right, you're in. What? You're in. No. What? You said it yourself. We've all got too much tech. But I managed to get shot just coming to talk to you. Now I'm supposed to hack my way into a safe room. We'll be backing you up. The second you hit something you can't handle, we'll cover you. If that's settled, it looks like there's one last hurdle to get us inside. Which is? Black tie required. <laughs> okay, so in this part of the story, you can only you know choose one squad mate to come with you. Since you know I put, made Liara this shepherd her romance um, through the course of the series, I'm gonna you know choose Liara for this job. So let's get it started. Oh, this game I can honestly say, well, not this game, this DLC I can honestly say, yeah, like I said before, the last video is one of the best DLCs they could never made. It sort of reminds you of the original storytelling that they said, that they told throughout the course of the period of the game, disregarding, you know, the whole ending of this game and so forth. You know, if, like I said, if they could really had a chance to really reduce stuff, um, I would say that. The ending wouldn't have been just as good as this DLC, but I'm going to be quiet and let this play out right quick. You're looking lovely tonight. Let it never be said I don't take you anywhere nice. <laughs> yeah, let it be said we never technically are anywhere nice. Just, you know, a bunch of gunfights, explosions, and deadly reapers, yeah, you know. Yeah, you have any input? Khan has a lot of surveillance set up. I'd mingle with the guests if you want to look normal. Oh crap. Sorry about that. My controller just okay, died. Time to meet the riffraff. <sighs> mingle with. What do you have? Nothing too crazy. I want to be able to walk a straight line. Okay. That's Quick thing I like to say. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I like. Oh crap! Controller died again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, with this, I like how they did incorporate Mass Effect 2 Shadow Brokers DLC because uh, this basically has. This, well, you'll see it <coughs> as in the course of the video goes on. It has the same setup. Like Liar will give you these special type of eyes that will allow you to see wireless in the floor, so you can be able to, you know. Disable security cameras and look for other things that you have to hack over the course. Uh, but I like how they you know, they incorporated the second game with it. But then I also, like I said before in my first video, I also like how they included Emmy One's Shepherd's Home. Like for those that you don't know, because I remember Game of Ethel, he asked, "Oh, I did not know that." Uh, yes, if you, you know, if you look up on YouTube one time and just type in, you know, Emmy One Shepherd's House. It's gonna show. I'm um, pretty much. You're gonna find. You know. You're gonna find somebody with a video. Can you meet me? 
Okay. Uh, I know you're gonna pretty much find a video where I don't know which planet or which star cluster that is in, but you're gonna find uh, Shepard's home. I'm guessing he gets it from a side mission or something like that. Right. But Looks it's like pretty it's interesting. There's an alarm on the grate. We'll have to bypass it. Use this. It's a resonance emitter lens. It should let you see security grids and wiring. Good. I'll follow the wiring to a junction box, splice it, and disable the alarm. Yeah. The lens is working. Good. Okay, yeah, this is the burn I was talking about from the ME2 where you had to do uh, a <coughs> no Kasumi thing. When you, for those who don't know, ME2 Shadow Broker DLC was about you know you had to get Kasumi to. Uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, guys, I'm playing to, to playing to attention to this and talking to you guys at the same time. You had to basically hack. You basically had to uh, help her steal back her friends gray box that had her friend in it not what well, her friend all her friends data in it and you basically had to go uh, steal it back for her but in one of the things you had but in the game you had she hacked your army tool so that way you wouldn't been able to find <coughs> what's I'm, what I'm trying to say you had to find you know the circuit breakers to cut the power to the uh, to the vault so you didn't set off any alarm so what that's what I enjoyed about it, um, you know, about that they brought that back into this. Oh yeah, and another quick tip for those that didn't know that played the DLC, you can find Shair over here, the one back from ME1, and you can actually talk to her. And if you did, you know, play ME1 and saw her as that little side mission, she will remember you like so. Commander Shepard, I thought I might find someone dangerous at the soiree. I'm Shaira. Yes. Famous Asari consort. I know who you are. No, you have heard of me. That is something entirely different. Point taken. Okay, well. Oh, my bad. Well, I was looking like not with this shepherd. I didn't probably do the uh, side mission back when I played this since ME1, but um. But yeah, if you do have a shepherd and you actually took the time out to do that side mission, you know, with General Oak here. Come and on, you know, <coughs> talk to her. You, when you come back here, you can actually <coughs> talk to her, and she'll say, "It's been no, it's been a long time, Shepard. I'm just glad to see you." And then you know, I think they have a discussion about the Reapers. If you go back and keep talking to her about it, you know, it's just something interesting. I, I didn't really expect them to do something like that. Uh, you know, to have like an Emmy one reference in this game. You know, that something like that. That's that takes you. By surprise, like whatsoever. Um, there's a lot of different shady people here. I can say, well, you—it's a casino. Shady people do be here, but it's some like real stuck-up people. It seems like Bioware. Honestly, they with Mass Effect, I can sort of say they mimic the real world in a lot of situations. You know, with you know how sucky politics is, how the government is when it comes to certain issues um i can honestly say that that um they honestly were honestly <clears throat> with this dlc i sort of felt like they made a little bit more of a connection reference you know like the underground sort of dark world of you know society you know you still got casinos you still got stuff like that whatsoever um but yeah, um, it's pretty interesting. It's just I wish you know this 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 harder storytelling that was told in this DLC. I wish they wouldn't have put this towards you know when they was making when they when they made the Leviathan DLC. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I think that Leviathan DLC actually couldn't have say uh, the whole entire ending. Well, well, okay. Let me explain a little bit further. Okay, so you learned that, for those that don't know, for, to learn that the Leviathans are actually this ancient race that was actually here before the Reapers. They actually created the Reapers, and the sole purpose of them creating the Reapers were to make sure, you know, all, like, humanity, Salarian, Turian, all of them were kept in the place. You know, not like, what I mean kept in place, what I mean is make sure that one didn't try to wipe out one another that it was like a steady population of them they wasn't always they wasn't you know growing out of control but this just caused 
their own creation failed them because as the reapers were designed to you know make sure species stay in a design in a very designed and very controlled group so they don't you know expand and try to take over one another they saw that their own creators the Leviathans were a threat so they began to wipe out their own creators so but with that you know only like a couple of them survived and then the whole DLC thus you know you go to the Citadel you find somebody that has you know information on Leviathan is you know this ancient race and then you know you basically have to journey from the city across the galaxy back towards basically like a back and forth sort of thing trying to figure out everything and then you finally go and find them on I, I hadn't actually played the DLC but this is from what I've seen I don't know what the planet was but you actually go and find them and have a conversation to, with them and they explain the whole entire story of how you know they created the Reapers the sole purpose. They created the Reapers and, you know, they didn't really expect them to actually, you know, to betray them and actually grow more of an own conscious and try to take them out. Now, the way how I wouldn't have rewritten it was so that it cancels out that whole entire ending is since they created the Reapers, they couldn't have actually told Shepard a way to defeat them. Without, you know, that whole choice bull crap, you know, either control, synthesize, and then you have the class to destroy. Like, they actually teach, tell you the way to actually permanently me, stop the Reapers from, um, taking over. Okay. But I can't, I but the way I, I don't know why they did that, it's like once you beat the DLC, <coughs> excuse me, once you actually find the DLC, I mean, not find the DLC, finish the DLC, um, you actually just earn them as a resource. You don't earn them as anything else. You know, you, I'm betting some people was actually expecting, you know, when they did this, you know, they actually, uh, get a, like, an awesome science. Cinematic, uh, uh, cin uh, awesome cutscene. I can't say cin cinematic cutscene about you know the Reapers coming into the fight and they automatically able to shut the Reapers down from whatever crazy method that they ever had. If you guys can think of a you know a crazy method that they wouldn't have probably used to stop the Reapers, you know, let me know in the comments below. I would I would love to hear like some awesome. <laughs> awesome way that they probably had to you know so you stop the them? reapers you know from them coming to the fight but other than that you know you just earn the resource of you know of having them just to help you in the fight you know you don't get to see them in the final battle cutscene nothing like that it's just you know you just get them as extra support to help you take on the real fight but honestly i think that leviathan dlc they couldn't actually turn stuff around uh, for this whole entire game it wouldn't put a nice little spin on things but um as for that omega dlc like i said before i just really thought that was just delaying stuff like i think that was just a way to burn through microsoft points honestly in my opinion Dude, for this game it just pretty much talks about you know taking back omega from the uh, from from Cerberus from the elusive man and help get Arya back in power. I don't know I don't know about the choices or stuff like that. It's just this is just my no open say opinion about the whole entire thing. And it, to me, it really just didn't really make any sense to like really. I I didn't really so much care for Arya back during the first game. It's like. They, she sort of had this, res I would not really say respect, but just like this mutual respect for Shepard. You know, Shepard can pretty much kick her ass and take out her whole entire force. But at the same time, you don't like her statement and say, don't, nobody fucks with Arya. But really too much, I just thought she was just some fucking stuck up Asari that thought she could do whatever the hell she want. You know, that's just how I felt about Arya. I don't know. Some of you all may like Arya. I don't know, but yeah, I didn't really care for Arya too much, and I didn't really want to help her take back Omega. Like, she wasn't really doing shit. The only thing she, the only time she ever did something, is somebody fucked with her, and then Omega was pretty much a sleaze hole. With, you know, for those that played Mass Effect 2, but I can understand why it was a sleaze hole because it was showing the darker side to the Shepard story. That you know, it wasn't always like a goody goody two shoes experience of experience and you know oh yeah we're doing everything by the book and everything's gonna go our way no fucked up shit can happen and and can fucked up shit happen oh and definitely fucked up shit can happen and i so totally forgot that i was actually doing a mission 
I'm thinking we doing. I have to sit up and mingle again. My bad. Okay, I gotta find the red wires. Okay, red wire. Okay, that junction ends. I already disabled that one, so I gotta find the next one. Across here, run a little bit quicker. Ah, the old famous Shepherd Baywatch run. Very, very classic. Okay, that was <coughs> a bad one. I ended in wire. Somewhere around here. Yeah, no, yep, here it is. Don't you remember that feels, but it's in plain view of two guards. But you can do something, right? Because my legs are maybe sort of starting to fall asleep a little. Okay, here we go. Got this. Back in the sensor. I like that whole thing what they did. Uh, that they made you since you know you're not. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. I like what they did with this DLC. Even though it's even though Shepard is all. Hang on. Okay. Was I as I was saying? I like how even though Shepard is also just. Thing is nothing but uh freaking gunfights and stuff like that. Awesome gunfights to be exact. I like how um they with this one part you know, since you got one squad mate, you can, you know, basically have them distract other guards while you do stuff. Sort of like uh with um like they sort of I think took a little bit from Assassin's Creed. Like if you wanted to get past some guards, you know, you could hire a prostitute, you know, to basically distract guards. While Not you, uh, you while you, <laughs> while you go assassinate somebody or do your business or, you know, try to escape. I thought that was pretty nice. You know, you can have either the R, Ashley, Rex, or whoever you want to decide to take on this mission with you. You can have them, you know, distract whoever you, whoever the guards you want to, uh, that's watching you over a certain thing that you need to hack or bypass. Overall, things are going so good, um. How, this DLC took me about like honestly about two and a half hours uh, so to speak when I first played this with my male shepherd uh, the reason why I say that because uh, well you guys well as you guys saw from the first one uh, these get these mercs yeah they're not easy to kill but that was just only the silence part you, you guys may think the silence part with the, when you, not the silence part the part where you go to the restaurant you may thought that was a little bit difficult but wait until you meet the rest of the mercenaries that, you know, that actually carry, you know, bigger guns. Uh, there's, like, the ones, the certain ones that carry the flak shields, like what Cerberus do, the, uh, the Cerberus officers, the old, those guys that carry their own type of shields, they're in this DLC, but, like, they don't have that type of metal shield. It's like a, uh, like a regular shield, like a shiny shield. I want to say shiny shield. I know that. I know that's probably not the name for it. But yeah, they carry those type of shields, and it's really not easy. It's just like with the server shields. You know, you can you with the since they're metal, you automatically see the open slot, and you know you can just fire right in it and get a headshot, which is called a mail shot. Not so much with these. It's like since they are these special type of shields that you'll see in these type in these DLCs. It makes it a little bit difficult, you know, to really pop off their headshot. I actually would try to snipe their feet like I usually try to, well, not snipe, but shoot their feet like I would do in the other DLC. But uh, it didn't really work so much with this. I thought it did, but after I got wrecked so much, I said that was enough. But it's like when I played with my second film ship um, during off before I started recording with this one. Uh, I liked how uh, I had an overshield, you know, and the overshield basically gave me a lot of good cover when it came to, uh, you know, taking a lot of bullets and everything else. Pretty much simple. I'm guessing she doesn't have anything else to say. That's surprising. Okay, let's go mingle with everybody else. I think the whole mingling thing, like something like this, you you wouldn't really think they would need to put something in like this DLC, but I think it was just like a preview to show how much they improved, uh, you know, that you don't, for Shepard to talk to everybody, it doesn't always have to be, you know, Shepard's choice of words in the matter, you know, he can just, Shepard him, Shepard can just have a, like a general conversation with people, and then you can, you know, you can revolve it all around them, look at Shepard at the process of talking. I just thought that was nice to show, you know, to show that you know Shepard is really 
really a part of the really part of the conversation and um you know it's 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 cool that you know you're not always looking from a i want to say first not first person you are uh, yeah like sort of like a first person view you're not always looking through that that type of view you know you're always you know can be on the outside looking in for the most part thought that was very cool but uh well, let me hack this camera all right go ahead Liar, do your thing hey i told you i like that Very, very, very. Guard spotted me. Oh crap. Crap, crap. I did not mean to do that. Uh, you, tough girl. I gotta go bring out to dumb people. I have an opinion on something from a B-lister or the left. Okay, I'm good. Okay, don't want to hear you anymore. Okay, let's try that again from the top. Okay, let's do it. Go right way. What the hell? You're not mingling and you're not betting. Ah, uh, this is some crap. Okay, let me do it again. Uh, is there somewhere I can go to make a private call? What the fuck? Oh, uh, damn it. Hi <laughs> guys for the thing. Okay, I need to really get serious. Hang on a minute. Okay, let's do it the right way. What the? F oh, that asshole! Nah, I see. I gotta do this. It's like when I played this before. I never had no trouble out of that guard over here. It would just always, I would do it in order. You know, I would take out this one and then focus on another one. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There we go. Bingo. Bingo. What is his name? Come on. Hurry up, Liara. Stop talking. Liara! I got along with this damn thing. What the fuck? Oh, God. Even though I'm not saying shit. You look okay. hungry. They have that grown swordfish in the restaurant. Shall I save you a bite? Uh. I told you I like that fish. Told you I like that fish. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, stop. Hurry up. There we go. Those cufflinks. Is that design inspired by the late period in the sun? The attention to detail. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There you go, finally. About damn time. Let's get moving. Got to bypass this, and there we, there we go. Get you two. Okay, I like those eyes just a little bit. It looks pretty freaking sweet. Like Shepard can see through everything. I am X-ray Shepard. But yeah, um, we'll see what happens to Elijah. I see this conversation will be strictly one-sided. Commander, there's a deletion order on the terminal. Damn it. Everything's in white. I don't know if it was him or the killer or... When I took that alarm, did I screw this up? What are you looking for? Mistakes. Thought so. Whoever it was had to do this fast. They went to the terminal, but not the comm. Oh, so we can take the comm back to the safe house to scan it, or... Guess again. I see you've recovered from plopping on the floor on your bed. You'll need to do better than that. The last guy that trash talked me was a few kilometers taller than you. Brave, I thought as much, but it won't matter. You have nothing. All you can do is wait for the hammer to fall. Why do this? What did I do to you? I'm gonna take everything you have and everything you are. Damn it. Sorry, Commander. There wasn't enough time to trace the call. We're not finished. Pull out the data drives. The ones that got white? You think we can find something? With Edie, anything's possible. The sooner we get them to her, the sooner we can track down this threat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just met the mysterious person. 
that uh that somehow killed Elijah or somehow it had Lincoln to killing Elijah and that was the only lead. So uh we're gonna watch the next cutscene to see Thank what we gotta do me. next. That was fun. Alright. Well, not so much for the host. It wasn't a total loss. Brooks, work with Edie to see if there's anything useful on those drives. Here's hoping. I'll let you know what we find now. Uh, but as you can also see that, yeah, the joke element has been raised a lot in this game. Like, when her, when Liar or whoever you have to say that comes with you is how, but Liara sits up and say, you know, I'm guessing he's strictly one-sided. You know, I'm, you'll see a lot of super joke puns like that throughout the whole entire game. But, um, I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, I'll see you in playthrough three. Alright, guys? Alright. Peace.